Welcome, aloha, and thanks so much for joining us at ThinkTech Hawaii. This is the last week of the ThinkTech fundraising. So if you get time and you're motivated and you think ThinkTech is doing good things to promote difficult conversations to make good trouble, as we do, then click on Think Tech Hawaii, click on Donate, and whatever you're willing to do is greatly appreciated. We have with us today retired Judge Sandra Sims and author, now working on her second book, <laughs> David Louis, oh, who's a former Attorney General of the State of Hawaii, law partner, and also an author, and maybe working on his second book, <laughs> and Professor Emeritus, from the University of Toledo School of Law, Ben Davis, who's now visiting professor at Washington and Lee School of Law, and David Larson, immediate past chair of the American Bar Association Section of Dispute Resolution, and professor at Mitchell Hamlin Law in Minneapolis, St. Paul. Okay, so this is our last one of the year. We get a chance to kind of go out on whatever note you choose. Um, what do you think are the challenges that really face us going into 2023? Sandra, you want to start us off? The challenges. Okay, I can start. The challenges. I think, I don't know if I'd start with challenges because I think we're sort of ending this year on, at least it appears to me, uh, quite a hopeful note. Um, I think, well, for those of you who, who, who think so, I think the election results were, midterm elections results were considerably more than we had expected and turned out to be a far more positive situation uh, than we than those of us who, you know, lean toward that, that side, I uh, would imagine. I think we made some progress in addressing the issues that were generated by the overturning of Roe versus Wade. Um, and as well as uh, forestallings, any sort of um, pushback on interracial and same-sex marriage, um, which hadn't been codified before. So that's like there now. And uh, we have, I was noticing yesterday, uh, listening to some of the Sandy Hook uh, tributes, that the young people who are coming out of that, who've been very, very energized um, to address some of the key issues that surround young folks, are now turning 18, they're registering to vote. We're seeing more of that. So actually, um, it's kind of hopeful right now um, for some things to, 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 to make. There's obviously, obviously there's still challenges, but uh, I've been saying all year that you know, the young folks are gonna save us and apparently they're getting ready to do so. <laughs> yeah, it was certainly not the seniors in their voting, at least the white seniors. So, <laughs> One of the challenges that goes along with the bright spots that you just insightfully pointed out is if the Republicans control the House and the Demo Democrats control the Senate and the executive, eh, are they just going to shut things down in gridlock? Ooh. Ben? Well, I'll jump in and... Uh... And say that uh, say that uh, it's not uh, looking so good. Okay, I mean, once the numbers come up so that there is a Republican majority in the House, you know, the the first intimations, leaving aside the whole McCarthy thing of whether he's going to make it or not, but the whole intimations of what's on their agenda did not look like it was an agenda of uh, moving on or addressing uh, particular problems of people. You know, it was sort of like, let's have a lot of, uh, of hearings on various things. And Hunter Biden's laptop, I've been, I, I think I have, I must have that in my closet here. You know, that's where it's being hidden, you know. Uh, but, you know, there's a lot of that going on. Now, I don't know if uh, uh, this is kind of the, the bluffing beforehand, but uh, one thing that, uh, I do uh, uh, gives me concern or qualms. I'll just say it this way: is that uh, just the amazing capacity for people to say uh, things that are really like insane in in uh, 
but I wonder if there's a certain amount of people being willing to say that is insane. Uh, I just uh, was listening to the news early today, and I guess there was some member of the uh, Freedom Caucus who was saying that the shooter in that Buffalo rest, uh, that Buffalo supermarket. Uh, was really Antifa, you know what I mean? And I was like, wait a minute, the guy literally had the N word written on his gun, you know what I mean? I was like, I mean, uh, and he and you know, fully, you know, had all that stuff. But I was like, seriously, is there, you know, it's almost like it's so crazy that um, I don't know how that plays out with 80 or 90 percent of Americans, but. Uh, I, I look at that and I say, uh, whether you're trying to quote unquote own the libs or not, it's just insane. I mean, you know, I mean, if somebody could feel owned by that, it just seemed to, you know, you look at the person and say, geez, have you taken your medication? You know what I mean? Because, uh, so, the, you know, there are things like that, that, um, uh, there's this kind of weird reversal thing that goes on where you have this sort of political discourse that's all there. Like, I think it was on uh, uh, Fox News was really upset about the LGBT thing passing, right? You know, but they don't say anything about the interracial part of it. I say, wait a minute, man, you know, <laughs> you know, I'm in Virginia, okay? Loving v. Virginia 1967, you know, Virginia there. is for lovers, you know, and all that stuff. And it's like, oh, they, you know, this is a bad law. Say, well, what about talking about the interracial part, you know? And how does that play into your, because both are covered in this law, you know? And it's just funny, you know, to watch this sort of what's said and what is unsaid weird game, you know? And I don't know what the answer is. And I, But, um, I, you know, I saw a lot of folks who uh, are allies who are LGBT who felt good, you know? They actually felt good. And I said, well, that's good with all the craziness. That's good that, that for at least a little bit. There's a little optimism. Uh, and so maybe that's the thing that I'm positive about. But, uh, you know, I saw I, I, there's another thing is and I'm going to end with this is uh, I, you know, I, I believe in, in uh, faith and things like that and, re, you know, religious faith and all that. But I, I, I have to say I am seriously amazed and what is said in the name of faith with the, the texts that have come out after or around January 6th or right up to January 20th, 21st, uh, sort of calling for martial law in Jesus's name kind of thing. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa what's <laughs> lately? You know, I mean, I'm just trying to, you know, figure that one out. You know, how you get from this to that. You know what I mean? So I don't know, but it. It, it, it sure looks like a lot of insanity is is exhibiting itself. I don't know how far it's going. Um, so, David and, Louis, while you were Attorney General for Hawaii, you were instrumental in getting the same-sex marriage passed here. Uh -huh. uh, are there lessons or challenges from that that we still need to keep front and center now? Um. Well, that, that was my privilege to be involved in that. And it was part of, you know, a national movement uh, where we had the uh, United States State Supreme Court at that time ruling in Obergefell and in the Windsor cases that supported same sex marriage. Um, you know, my take on this to riff a little bit off of what Sandra and Ben have said is, is that I think we are in a mixed bag period. We, I, I can't quite tell. Some days I think it's two steps forward and one step back. And some days I think it's two steps back, uh, uh, albeit with one step forward. Uh, because there are there are great things that have happened. We yes. Yes, we got uh, um, uh, legislation. To, to codify nationally uh, same-sex marriage and, and uh, uh, interracial marriages, but you have the Supreme Court taking away rights, and you have Justice Thomas saying, yeah, we should, we should uh, get rid of all, all those prior decisions that gave anybody rights. Uh, you've got good things like Alex Jones being uh, held liable for billions of dollars uh, for his lies. Uh, but you have other people continuing to spew hate and lies. You still have Asians being attacked uh, for the color of their skin. Um, at the same time, I, I, I saw a story about a new 
chief justice or new justice of the Nevada Supreme Court, who is Asian and black. It's a woman. And she's a really I, I read the story about her. She's really terrific. So to me, it's it's a mixed bag mm-hmm. um, of, of what's happening. And, and uh, um, the, the one thing is, is, is that, you you know, somehow the, the with the Internet, and with Donald Trump and 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 with all of the dog whistles, we have let the genie out of the out of the lamp here. And the genie is doing terrible things. Everybody feels empowered now to to say or do terrible uh-huh. things. Um, and you know, I saw this cartoon. I saw it. And it was just like you know uh, where it was saying, "Be yourself, speak your truth, don't let people put you down." And then the next panel was about, you know, gays and lesbians and blacks and Asians going, yeah, 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 that's right. We're going to speak our truth. And then the next panel was a bunch of neo-Nazis and skinheads going, yeah, we're going to speak our truth. We're going to go kill those mothers, you know, and it's like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. (laughs) (laughs) You know, it's (sighs) terrible. I know. You know. And so I, I, I regard it as a mixed bag. There are some bright spots, but there are also some dark spots. Yeah. And, uh, you know, when when uh, Governor Abercrombie pushed forward the legislation in Hawaii and, uh, uh, to allow same sex marriage, you know, and, and when uh, President Obama got elected, I naively thought we have turned the corner. We have turned the corner. We're we're moving forward. We're bending the arc of history in the right direction. We and turned that, the corner, all right. <laughs> then, then after that, we got the back and, and and it all went to hell with uh, Donald Trump. Uh, so you know, but but that's not permanent either because he's he's starting to get his comeuppance. So I think it's a mixed bag. Some good, some bad. Okay, and we can hope that Kevin McCarthy doesn't try and break the House record of 133 votes for Speaker of the House. That's the most. Yeah. <laughs> so, David Larson, who, where do you think we're headed and what's in the way of that? Lots of interesting comments. Um, Chuck, you asked the question, are we going to be stuck in in stasis because um, now the, the Re- Republicans are going to take the House? 435 members. Um, you know, it's a little harder to rein in that many people as opposed to 100 senators. So I think the possibility of some defections is greater. I think it's going to be a little harder to keep that that slight majority all in line. So I'm a little more optimistic that uh, that the House won't be able to stop everything from going through, that some people may have a conscience and don't need a lot of them, and they might kind of drift over and, and support uh, legislation that's really aimed at helping people. So I'm not completely pessimistic about the fact that the that the House going a different direction than the Senate and the executive. Um, I am optimistic that finally uh, it looks like some of the criminal prosecutions are moving forward for January 6th and against um, the former uh-huh. President Trump. That uh-huh. to me that's really encouraging. It's taking forever, <laughs> but there's so many different actions moving forward. You have to believe that one or two are going to catch traction and maybe actually come to some kind of conclusion. Uh, I am still a little concerned about. I think we still have culture wars. Um, you know, we still have some very strong positions in terms of abortion, um, uh, in terms of um, in, ra- in positions on race and, and sexual orientation. And I think those are challenges going into 2023, that how can we begin to close the gaps in the culture wars and that people are so polarized on different positions? What can we do to kind of bring them more um, towards the center, closer to each other? Another thing that that definitely has me concerned um, coming out of 2022 into 23 is, uh, if anything, the number of mass shootings is going up. Uh, I think they're getting worse. And like every, every day you're seeing things and we've got 19 kids getting killed in Uvalde and two teachers. Uh, it's just horrific. And, um, you know, and that's, I think, one legitimate concern about the House going Republican is that to the degree that we desperately need legislation to limit um, high powered rifles and, and um, automatic weapons. And I don't know if we can get it through the House. And uh, and if we don't do something, these mass shootings and mass killings are just going to going to continue. So that's 
that's really troubling. Um, uh, a, a really optimistic news point came out the other day is that apparently we are now um, learning how to harness fusion. And um, and if that's true, and that we're going to be able to move away from fossil fuels, that is tremendously exciting. Yeah. Um, that's going to change our our climate. That's yeah. going to change global power structures. Um, that's, that is a remarkable discovery. And hopefully what we're hearing is true and that they actually can move forward and, and capitalize that in, in a, as quickly as possible and as efficiently as possible. So that's something yeah. I'm definitely optimistic about. Well, that's a great insight because yeah. it gives us direction and motivation. And that may be what's most needed to deal with these challenges, that if some people are stuck, remind them. The great majority of the populace prefers gun control, abortion, affordable housing for the homeless and the poor, health care for the homeless and the poor, all of those things. So is there going to be any progress on any of those? So there was a story on NPR this morning about how the Republican legislators in Ohio are trying, and, and in a bunch of states, uh, notwithstanding the overwhelming popular sentiment in favor of various uh, initiatives and rights, that the Republican legislators are trying to take away the ballot initiatives and 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 the fact that you could change the Constitution by popular vote. So what you have is, is the hand reaching up from the grave uh, to try and you know, kill the future uh, and the popular will. And it's it's unfortunate, but that goes along with the exercise of power. You will always have people trying to uh, control others uh, and, and bend them to their will uh, and do things that are against the will of the people, which is unfortunate. So I don't know that we, uh, you know, you got to get people activated. You got to get them out to vote. Uh, and unless they're willing to exercise their rights, those rights are going to be gone. The, you know, Democrats were motivated to vote in these midterms, I think, in part because of the overturning of Roe versus Wade. But I also think that a lot of people were motivated to vote and some Republicans because it finally began to sink in that they're that that democracy is fragile and that um, yeah. you can slip into an autocratic state a lot more easily than perhaps we once thought. And uh, I, I listened to a lot of interviews of voters in Georgia, and there were Republicans saying, I'm voting in this election because I'm concerned about the future of democracy. Yeah. And I didn't hear that so much um, even four years ago. So right. to me, that, that's encouraging, that they, the idea that people are saying, we really do have to protect this. And I think the, the failure of so many Trump-endorsed Republicans around the country is a recognition of that, that we really need to elect responsible, intelligent people as opposed to um, extreme ideologues. Mm. Uh -huh. uh, uh, if I could jump in on one thing that uh, does uh, occur to me in... Uh, uh, Sandra, I, I guess I'm I'm reaching out to you in particular, but more broadly to all of us is the uh, the sort of revelations about the Supreme Court that are coming out right now uh, about you know the efforts to influence them outside of that oral argument you know thing that we always think yes. about or yes. the yes. submissions yes. and the oral <laughs> argument structure and all that stuff and the, this. Uh, I, I saw that there was a gentleman who said that, you know, he'd gotten a heads up on an earlier yeah. case as the as the answer was. And he testified before Congress and talked about very conscious effort uh, in the sort of the anti-abortion movement. Right. OK. But what occurred to me was like, what about any other thing out there? What other issues? A, yeah. You know, other yeah. issues. Um, I mean, we've had. Uh, at various law schools have been, you know, you'd have a Supreme Court justice who would come and talk, you know, and, you know, you could, you could see a Supreme Court justice speaking to a group or this kind of thing and like seeing an effort to really sort of shape the context for them uh, in ways that I found really kind of uh, nagging at me that they've got to deal with this in some way. I don't know if they're able to do it, but it, 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 you know, if, if people are really feeling that it's just politics and uh, who you know and, you know, and who can influence, um, 
uh, which maybe a lot of people already think. I still think yeah. it's really troubling, at least the forms of of distance and the forms of uh, uh, independence, because it got me thinking all the way back to the cases in the 1800s and 1900s. Was there, you know, the kind of club thing at the Cosmo Club or whatever it was going on while the case is being argued by the lawyers in front of them? And there is this influence game going on in the background. And that's what yeah. is yeah. the most recent thing. Yeah, yeah I, I was going to get to that in a minute that the sort of the concern about the supreme court um is something that's kind of nagging at me too you kind of think that wait a minute we're really entering into an era where that our supreme court is not viewed in the same way that you know those of you who are on this panel would have seen how a supreme court is to be regarded how you regard the uh, rules of precedent and even their interactions with each other the upside though well uh, it's kind of it's, it's hard right now to watch what's happening in the Supreme Court, at least to me, it is. Um, you know, I think that I think postponing Garland for a year yeah. and then putting Barry down in a week, I think that yeah. those two actions really destroyed a lot of faith in the Supreme Court. He did. The he idea did. that it's a non political body because that's the only way you can explain that. Mm, yeah, yeah. Raw political power. Yeah. That is troubling. That part is. And then, of course, the whole Thomas. Jenny Th Thomas and his wife situation is that's that's just plain scary to me. Uh, that that's just scary to me that yeah. you could have that kind of. I mean, not that you have that relationship, that's fine, but you just glibly say that it's not having an effect on how you're making decisions. Nobody believes that. Right. Right. Nobody believes that. That's just. No. I don't know. Nobody can believe that. Right. I mean, it's quite disappointing to me that the justices of the Supreme Court refuse to establish any kind of an ethics code, mm -hmm. any kind of a behavioral code, uh, any kind of, of, of code at all, or just rules and regulations that they will not cross. Um, I saw that, that um, uh, Justice Katanji Brown recused herself uh, from the Harvard case because yeah. she had been there. But you know the Justice Thomas, Justice Scalia, and the rest of these conservative justices would apparently not recuse themselves from anything, um, regardless. And so, so the thing is, is, is that unfortunately, um, you have some people playing by certain sets of rules and thinking those are fair, and other people not wanting to play by the rules. And it's very disappointing that that the uh, justices refuse to see it for themselves, that they are not above the law and that they should be subject to an ethics code, uh, just like everybody else. Every single judge in the United States yes. is subject to an ethics code, except for them. Except for them. Yeah. And we have a chief justice who does not appear to be effective in bringing influence to move in that direction. Oh. That makes me think of another thing is this case about the what is the independent legislator case that was argued in front of the Supreme Court where yeah. I think it was the fifth the, the chief justices of all 50 states and seven territories wrote to the Supreme Court saying this is a bad idea. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, I was like, that's pretty that's pretty intense to have 50 chief justices right of the state yeah. uh, Supreme Courts writing to the federal Supreme Court saying, this is a bad idea. You know, we'll see what happens. But, yeah. you know, I'm like, that's pretty powerful, you know. That there, of course, there, 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 the, 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 the response will be that, of course, they're going to say that because what this theory does is cut them out of the loop. So the, 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 the response will be that, uh, we can dismiss what they're saying because they just don't want to be cut out of the loop. It's all about their power. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, but you know, I'm, I'm just going to say, ah, yes. I, I don't buy. It's I don't buy that. It's Madison. It's Madison. There it is. Uh, you know, the the yeah. checks and the balances and the fighting and all that stuff. Yeah, it's not, it, it, yeah. I sort of make sure that I don't. I, what I just said is what I maintain. Yeah. 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 No, I, but that's the that's the side of it that it's, yeah. may get promulgated. Uh, should that argument come out in front of us? I, yeah, it is. Seeing our Supreme Court now is is is. Very, very troubling to me. 
Well, you know, the idea that it just it literally blows my mind, the idea that interracial, the legality of interracial marriage is back on the table. It's like, yeah, yeah. Uh, how, yeah. how can we go back decades? You know, how can we go back in time like this? And think, think about like, this is a new issue, something to be reconsidered. It's, yeah. it's, it's just this mind boggling. Yeah. It, it's and yet here we are. Here we are. And here we are. Yes, and we can only hope. Go ahead, David. No, I, I mean we can only hope. And some days I have unbridled optimism and hope for the future, <laughs> and other days I'm very depressed. Uh, yeah. We can only hope that that we have enough of an educated, rational, reasonable populace in the United States that we will not let democracy go uh, without a fight, that we that people will not step up. You know, I mean, unfortunately, you have autocracies and dictators and strongmen asserting themselves in tons of places around the world. And you don't have an educated enough populace and you don't have enough people to step forward um, to protect the democracy. Um, and, and be willing to do that. And, and I, I think we have enough in the United States, although some days I question that. Uh, yeah. You know, at the midterm election, with the elections coming up, a lot of people um, were saying that message. And then as I said a little earlier, I think people heard it. I heard voters in Georgia hearing it. The problem is, now that the elections have passed and that, that immediacy has gone away, you know, I think some people believe their need for them to uh, uh, continue to explain how how vulnerable democracy is, how things are at risk, how careful we have to be goes away. And the people who are working against it, they they're not stopping. You know, they're not right. letting up. So that you know that that balance can kind of start to shift because the voices of reason don't feel that immediacy and are getting a little quieter. And the other ones working against that are, are just not letting up. And then our last minute. Sandra, any words of wisdom going forward? Hey, David Larson, I, I, I hope you're wrong. That's the best I can say. I hope you're you're wrong with that. And you and, I, and I'm sure you you feel the same way, but you there are those voices out there. But then there are also maybe we don't hear I, I just believe that we don't hear them as much. Those that are the easy, the intelligent voters are out there, the thoughtful citizens are out there. Uh, sometimes when they are engaged and, and involved in their own communities, they begin to see that there are ways that we can communicate with each other, that we can address issues, you know, from a sort of this uh, organic local perspective. I, I have to, you know, I, I agree with David Louis as well. I've, some days you're like, yes, we're going to be all right. And others like, oh my God, I can't get out of bed. But, <laughs> you, know, you know, you know, but <laughs> yeah, that's where I'm at. <laughs> Okay, David Louis, last words. Yeah, I you know, it's just so important for shows like this and for people like all of you to just keep talking your truths, to encourage people not to be apathetic. Remember that that's what Martin Luther King said. The apathy of your average person is is worse, you know, than than the guy who's out there who's a uh, in your face racist sometimes. It's the apathy of the people who just stand by and allow that's these it. things uh, to happen and allow rights to be taken away. So, uh we just all have to be vigilant and hopefully things will come out all right on the other side. Okay, and David Larson, last words? Yeah, I, I, I agree. Um, kind of going back to what I said before and what David just said and Sandra, is that we do have to keep talking. We have to talk calmly yeah. and rationally. You know, don't, you know don't, don't accelerate the volume. Don't get all worked up. Just calmly and rationally explain what's at risk here. Um, you know, you elect um, uh, Walker in Georgia and understand what those implications are. Yes. And then when it comes to federal allocations that he's not going to be argued very effectively to get money for Georgia. You know, understand what you, you know, what's at stake here. And um, you know, think about the implications and let's talk about it rationally. Good point. And Ben, do you want to finish us off? Well, I, I, I just think little uh, good taglines are also good to, you know, to break it, break things down for people like, I really thought it was great when there was this uh, reverend in 
in Georgia right before the election said, we don't need a walker, we need a runner, you know, a runner for justice, a runner, you know, I was like, oh, he, you know, he, you know that, that, that ability to just crystallize it for people in ways, you know, and, and so, you know, we, we, we don't need to be walkers for justice, we need to be runners, for, you know, for justice yeah, and yeah. housing and uh, making that better world for our children our, and, you know, the best we can, you know, we can only do what we can and where we're at and we just try to do what we can and that's already something and quite honestly i feel really good because i see you all and it makes me feel good to see all of you all right all because we're in a lot of different places with a lot of different experiences but you know i'm trying to be on the side of the angels and that's all you know and i'm not saying that's a democrat or republican i'm not saying that i'm just in the side of the angels of trying to make it a better world for all of us that's already something you know and Sandra, David, and David, thanks so much for your insights. We know we have the challenge of trying to build on democracy. We're not there yet. We got a long way to go, but it comes down to what people are willing to stand up for and speak out for. And you're yeah. exactly right. Hopefully the voters and the people will give us a direction that the politicians will have to listen to. Take care. Excellent. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. To all Happy of holidays, everybody. Yeah. And holiday greetings from Think Tech. And to all of you and yours, take good care. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.